What is the business model of Pornhub? I don't know what the business sure. model of Pornhub. How do you guys make money? It's an ad supported platform primarily. So it's not a membership. It's an ad supported. That's right. So Alo as a company, we have Pornhub that's ad supported and then we have subscription based sites like browsers. So you guys are going to do roughly 500 to 550 this year, give or take. We can't disclose our It's a private company. Okay. A private company. So I mean that's the number I saw online. So if if it's you can't disclose it, I get it. Half a billion is a real number that is plastered all over the place. Let's say somewhere on that number. And that's advertisers. That, so outside of advertisers, there is no membership. There's nothing else. There's for no membership Pornhub economy. Specifically. For Pornhub specifically. But the company has other has other brands which are subscription based. And is it porn or it's 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 an adult. It is a studio it is. Of produced content, yes. So the ones that are membership based, how different is that than Pornhub? So it's those are seen. So we're talking about the the flagship brand for that would be Brazzers. Uh-huh. Um so that's studio produced professional grade content. See, for that, to me, that's something where it's like, hey, here's professionally done. This is the age. So Pornhub is, is it like the YouTube for porn to so, kind of? Yeah. So basically what's happening right now is that exactly the process that you just described, that's pretty much what happens on a porn set. On the browser site. On on a professional set. But now because so much content is being produced at home, we're uh, seeing a time where this that is becoming the norm. And this is exactly the methodology that we've adopted on Pornhub, which is why yeah, we require all of these checks. We require IDs. We require- There's no way you're able to do it though. I'm sorry? There's no way you're able to do it. There is no technology to be able to tell if somebody was under age of 18 or not. There is no way you can 100% guaranteed verify at the time of the video being shot, the person was under 18. But the point is like, you set this impossible standard that applies only to but adults. But to tell me based no. on, you tell me to 100% so, so that you can do so, it based so on technology. Second. What you need to do yeah. is you need to have a reasonable level of assurance that this is legal, consensual, mm-hmm. informed consent content, okay? So we start, you start with right. having the age ID <laughs> consent of every single person who appears in content. Like that's wild. When I tell you that we do that, no other adult platform or mainstream platform comes close to that. Like, think about that for a moment. You upload a video, has three people, has four people in it. It cannot go live on the site until we, on the trust and safety side, have verified the age ID consent of everyone appearing in there. Now, you raise this other scenario. Like, well, what if you have all that, but one of the people have lied to you about when the content was actually shot? We're like, okay. But we have already guaranteed more than anybody else in terms of the fact that, that this content anything, is completely that legitimate. That doesn't mean anything. It's just lip service, right? I mean, somebody- No, it's it, beyond if, lip service. I'm, no, if, it's if, a if huge I'm, financial investment. If I'm playing, listen, what I'm saying to I'm, guys, I play devil's advocate with everything and you do. I we get don't take a, it personally at all. What I'm yeah. saying to you is this is an everyday, if you're friends with me or your family with me, my family and people who have been in business with me, they're like, this is how we have lunch every day. So it's just a conversation. So Brazzers, okay? Everything is shot professionally. Everything goes through- uh, uh, I'm assuming like, hey, you're, you have to show me your HIV test that you just did, that you don't have any sexual transmitted. I'm assuming it's that level of professionalism, similar to Vivid or some of the other guys that do, that do it. Yes? Is that what no. Brazzers is? Correct. But okay. what, what I'm trying to, to impart here is that this is the model that is being adopted because, like Saul said, the creator at home industry has collided with the professional. And, and we're seeing this across the board, right? Across all types of entertainment systems, right? Where you could say arguably that people that are creating YouTube programming at home, very similar to someone that's watching a morning show, yeah, right? Yeah, like there's it's, a big difference though. I mean, that's different though, because YouTube, the, YouTube programming at home, mm-hmm. I'm not showing penetration and I'm not getting out there and saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this. And, you know, no, I'm sitting to give my opinion on something. And then if it's... Oh, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, but there's a big difference is, between the two. There is, but because this is an industry that you know is under a lot of scrutiny, understandably so for the reasons that exactly that you mentioned, these are protocols that people are adopting at home as well when they're... Like, these are not... Um, I think it's really important to get away from the idea that it's just someone with like a webcam that wants to, you know, throw something. So what is the process for me to upload a porn video on Pornhub? What's the pro what's the step by step process? We'll start with, you need to verify your age and ID as Mm -hmm. the uploader. So how do you do that? Okay. So we use first a third party provider, then we verify it with a moderator. So that involves three things. Number one, a scan of real government ID from your country of origin. That's verified 
it can't be it can't be a screen cap sure. it can't be whatever compliance measures like you're mm-hmm. right. you know used by banks insurance companies governments around the world got it then a biometric scan of the face that requires movement to create what's called a photogrammetric measurement to make sure you're a real 3D human being and not a picture okay then a comparison between those two done by the software compares the face that's been verified as being real with the government ID and then a um, a match between the two. That gets you level one. If you pass all of that, you then get handed off to our in-house moderation. So we don't, uh, unlike most social media companies, we don't outsource any moderation. We have a full-time staff working, verifying identities and moderating content. That moderator has to review that, ensure that you haven't been previously banned, which we would know because we hold ID, obviously. Uh, ensure that you're that you are who you say you are. That you're not from a country that raises flags. That all of this has been verified. Now you are eligible to attempt to upload content, not to How upload. Lo- okay. How long is that process? To get approved, it takes between twenty four to seventy two hours. So I could have a video up within twenty four. No, we're not there no, yet. We're no. just talking about to get approved, so you're at a status where you're even able to upload. How long after exactly. that can I okay. upload? A video? Depends on the content. So the next thing you do once you we've verified the identity. Yeah. Uh, you can then submit content for review, not upload. There is no auto upload. It cannot happen, okay? That content, so let's say you submit a video. Yeah. First of all, if it's more than just you in it, we need the same age ID consent for everybody appearing in the video, okay? Then we run it through automated processes. So we use, I think now, about 13 automated mm-hmm. tools. We work with any organization, government, who will give us a list of content that they have flagged as being problematic so we can scan all the content against it. We have our own in-house tools. Another reason we made this acquisition was because of the tools that the companies developed of content fingerprinting, identification, and tagging. A very interesting area that we wanted to be part of. If it passes all of those checks, it then goes to a human moderator for review. A real life person who is trained to review content, not just for age ID consent, but we have many, many rules. 100% about of the videos is watched by somebody. 100% okay. of the videos is watched How by someone. How many people work at Pornhub right now, full time? Uh, about 1,500 employees. 1,500 employees. Yeah. Got it. And how many videos are uploaded daily on Pornhub? Submitted for upload. No, no. I'm talking get to the point that somebody has to watch for upload. It's a couple thousand. Couple thousand. Yeah. And the average video is how long? It, it varies, but you know. But I see where you're trying to go. No, no, it's a good question. Wait a minute, right why question. are you worried though? <laughs> no, not worried. Oh, we're no, not worried so at well, all. how long does it, if it's 2,000 videos yep. that somebody has to watch, what is the average length of a video on Pornhub? So it's between five, 10 minutes. Okay, let's say 10 minutes. Let's yeah. do some math. For sure. So if we do, um, if we do 2,000 times 10 is 20,000, right? Minutes. Yeah, I did 2,000 yeah, yeah. videos mm-hmm. times 10 minutes. Yep. Okay. How big is a department that monitors this? So it varies, but hundreds. Okay. Right? Got Obviously, it. one of the things we change depending on how many videos are in a queue, what, what our needs are, right? And you guys watch 100% of the video. 100% of the video. Now, just to be in very clear. In addition to an AI transcript of the audio exactly. that's happening in the video. So the important thing... I, and I, that's why I kind of was preemptive as, as I'm far as- I'm a math guy. I'm just trying to do the super math. Super fair. Because, yeah. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if there's a million videos yeah. or five videos. The important thing to to sort of take away from this is that a video will not go live until it has been reviewed by a human. So that means if that video has to sit in a queue, you know, we're, we're not just trying to crank it out there to make people happy. We keep it in the queue until it has been reviewed. So, de- so that means, of course- um, we go through periods where there's backlogs and sometimes creators get frustrated with us because they say, you know, I put all this work into a video. It's been three, four days. Why isn't it live? And we understand that frustration, but we don't make exceptions. We have to wait until it has the chance to be human moderated. What's the before fastest it to go live. somebody uploads a video that will upload? It There's no, like, I, I can't really give a number on that because it, it Can really, it happen same day? Very rarely. Very rarely. But also it depends, okay. like if it's a 25 second clip, yeah. just, you know, one individual showing themselves and what they're mm-hmm. up to, that's that, that's an easy one, right? Like that's, that's if there's, quick. And it's one person and there's not co-performers because that's right. the thing. It's like we need the paperwork and the IDs and consent for everybody. So I, I think and where, where your mind goes, which is where my mind went when I learned about this is yeah. this is an enormous scale, mm-hmm. right? So one of the reasons that you want to talk about, you go back to your first question, why do we acquire this company? Okay. 
because they have developed processes both on the human side, but also on the software that we think the rest of the internet is going to need. Yeah. That we are three years ahead of where social media has to be. And we are looking forward to not just so setting an example. Is different than you though. That, that, that's a very different, like, un, un, um, but okay, let me. So I let, actually, it's not so different. The problems might be a little different, but yeah. whether it's uh, threats to violence or incitement or hate speech, there are always going to be material that as a society we've decided are, are just unacceptable. Okay? So for example, if you, if you go on a rap, can you type in the, the Wikipedia, you know, child pornography laws, right? If you go on here, Supreme Court of the United States has found child pornography outside of the protections of First Amendment of the United States. So child pornography is outside of U.S. Uh, jurisdiction. Federal sentencing guidelines are child pornography. Okay. U.S. laws distinguish between pornography and images of the actual minor realistic images that are not actual non-realistic images. The latter two categories. Child pornography first became illegal, strange to say this, the year I was born, 78. I'm surprised it wasn't before that. With the enactment of the protection protection of children against sexual exploitation of 1977, before the law of 1978, child pornography was illegal in only two states. The 1978 law was subsequently strengthened in 84 with the passage of the Child Protection Act. It was a goal of the Reagan administration to crack down on child pornography, with then-President Reagan stating the following in 87, the administration is putting the purveyors of illegal obscenity and child pornography on notice, your industry's days are numbered. I got a big announcement to make. The property I'm on right now, we've been working on buying this property for the last three years. It's one of its last kind in America. Why? Uh, it's on 11 acres, it's got two hangars, it's on an airport, upgrades of $7 million made here. That's gonna be the new headquarters of Valley Tayman, Manek, Ben David Consulting, the podcast, the whole nine, and what we wanted to do, we want to find a way to celebrate this as a new headquarters with inviting you to an event on November 5th, which is election night. A lot of different things people will be talking about, business owners, what's going to happen if it goes this way? What's going to happen if it goes that way? So imagine 2,000 people being here. Let me show you around. Some of you will have a private meeting with me. That's the elite. That's going to be a few of you. Some will get a private tour the entire office from us. There's a hangar in the back. So you come up here. Imagine there's going to be a couple major tents, 40 feet by 100 feet, where some of the people that are buying general tickets will be there. But over here inside the hangar is where the podcast will be held. This entire thing will be open like it is right now. Inside of it, myself, the PBD podcast crew, some of the super VIPs will be invited to go upstairs in a section that we have that's got a bar, a restaurant, food, you know, kitchen, you're eating, you're watching it from all the way up there while we're doing the podcast down here in the hangar. So imagine in this room, there's a thousand people, right? While we're going through this whole thing. Conversation, it's going to be from 6 p.m. is when it starts. All the way up to 2 o'clock in the morning. Who knows? Maybe we go 3, 4 o'clock in the morning because a lot of things that's going to be going on. And by the way, do you know why we're not cutting this? We're on an airport. These are planes. We have to hear because right here is the airport. And FYI, Messi plays right there at that stadium right behind us. There's five ticket tiers that you can purchase. Each one's got more things to offer. But even locally, there's general tickets to buy for just $75. Bring your uh, wife, bring your husband, bring your family, bring your friends. There's one caveat after you buy the ticket. When you buy the ticket and you come on November 5th, you have to wear Future Looks Bright gear. I'm talking Future Looks Bright hat, a shirt. Doesn't matter. You're going to have to show I got some kind of Future Looks Bright gear because we want everybody here to spread the message and the energy of optimism around the world, back to their states, wherever you're going to be. So November 5th, click on the link above or below, get registered. And if you're watching the same, well, Pat, I like to travel private. Can I bring my private jet here? Five of you guys will be after you buy your ticket, then you can ask us and that's only available to the tickets at the highest level possible to bring your jet and park it here. So having said that, get your tickets, and I cannot wait to see you November 5th, 6 p.m. at our new headquarters in Fort Lauderdale. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, bye-bye. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here, and if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.